Okay, everyone. So the first structure we're going to look at is called the simple cubic crystal structure. So what it means is that we have the center of atoms and it's located at the eight corners of a cube. So each of I want to draw, not click. There you go. Each of these is an atom. Doop, boop, 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 boop. Nothing in the middle. Nothing in these faces right here. So what you might be able to guess just by looking at this particular picture is that it's very, very open. Like in the center right there, there is plenty of room for some more stuff. So this is honestly not a very closely packed system. Um, it's not a very densely packed system, and that's why most metals do not have this crystal structure. In fact, only polonium, yeah, polonium, has this crystal structure. All other ones are going to have the other two, which we're going to learn about. Now, why is that? Because it's got a low packing density. In the case of polonium, there might be some sort of directionless, um, there might be a little bit of a directionality to its bonds, which might be why it goes into that simple cubic structure, though it's not super important for you. Now, one thing that's very important right here is the close past pack directions are the cube edges. Now, you're like, okay, why is that important? What does that even mean? What it means is if I'm trying to push an atom and I want it to collide with another atom as quickly as possible, I push along that direction. I either push it right here, because that's going to instantly touch another atom, or I push along this direction. Okay, it's always along the cube edges. In other ones, it might be have to push through the center or through the face. There's lots of different structures here. But in this case, this is how it most easily push atoms. We see this a lot in dislocations, like when you're bending a bar, it goes from this to this. But what you're usually doing is you are forcing atoms to move, and they will move along these different spaces. Also, stretching along these directions is um, easier than stretching along other directions. Okay, so here are some definitions here. Coordination number is the number of nearest neighbor or touching atoms. So if I predict, pick a particular atom, how many atoms is it touching? Also, atomic packing factor is the volume that you've actually filled. Think about it like how good of a job did the atom do in filling in this space? So what we do is we find a unit cell. And we're having to assume hard spheres here. Now that unit cell is a repeating structure. It looks something like this. It's a nice little cube, but if you see right here, like I've got an eighth of an atom in each corner. Well, if I drew a second one of these, those atoms will be now, you know, a quarter of an atom. If I kept on filling it in, you would see that the atoms would fill in. I'm just finding the smallest repeating structure inside of my, you know, very large system. It's quite a large system. And then I look at that and I see, okay, how much of this is filled? So it's volume of atoms in the unit cell over the volume of the unit cell. Now, we're going to do a problem with this one right here in just a moment, but I really want to focus on the coordination number. Coordination number isn't as easy to see when you're looking at only a single unit cell. That's because you're not noticing that it's touching something up here and over here and also out in front. When we draw a bunch of the atoms, though, you can see the coordination number very simply. Everything is stacked to these nice equal columns. There is no um, offset from plane to plane. And so if you look at it for this atom in the middle, it's connected to one, two, three, four, five, six. That's its coordination number. That's how many atoms it is close to. The higher your coordination number, the higher your packing density. Okay, now let's try out this problem right here. So we're gonna do the atomic packing factor for a simple cube. We're gonna see how well it does um, in packing things in there as a fraction of the total volume. So first off, we have to define something. What we're going to do is we're going to define the size um, of one edge as this dimension A. So the length of one of our edges of our unit cell is A, which is pretty simple. That means our volume of our unit cell is A cubed. Okay, now we've got to figure out, well, how much of that A cubed is filled with atoms? 
Well, one thing you're going to realize fairly quickly is there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these little edge pieces in there. And each of those is one eighth of an atom. So eight times one eighth is equal to, okay, well, guess what? That's equal to one. One atom. So there's one atom in there. And we know that all those atoms are assuming them to be hard spheres. So then the volume of a sphere is simply 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, we're getting closer. This works well. But we have things in terms of a here, and we have it in terms of r here. As a note, this big r is the same as this r right here. I just I typically use the lowercase r. So what we need to do is either get a in terms of r or r in terms of a, which in this case, it's fairly simple to do either way. If you look right here, you see that it looks like these two atoms, they touch right at that edge. And then it's one radius to the center, and then it's one radius the rest of the way. So r, or 2r, is going to be equal to a or r is equal to 0.5a. In the future problems we're going to be doing, there's a lot more geometry involved. It's not scary though. I'm going to be doing it with you, um, but you need to practice this because sometimes you're going to forget. Okay? So practice. Practice to see it. I don't necessarily give you all of these. Now, now that I know what the radius is, I simply plug what I got right here. I put it back into my equation. And as you can see, I can then cancel. These a cubed is going to cancel. And I'll be left with 0.52, which is very, very low. So just a little bit over 50% of the space has been filled. The rest is empty. So this is the lowest, the worst packed crystal structure. Um, and from here on out, we're going to go into the other common crystal structures and how they're packed. So I hope this helps you. And I'll see you all next time. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Bye-bye.